record that, Jim. Bet. Bet. What's up, YT, and welcome to the Dungeon Siege 3 review, the newest release in the action RPG franchise, Dungeon Siege, published by Square Enix and developed by Obsidian Software. I know I haven't done a review in a long, long time, but that doesn't mean this review is automatically going to suck. So, strap yourselves in and get ready to get your faces awesomized. That's totally a word. In Dungeon Siege 3, you return to the Kingdom of Eb, which already was featured in the first two games. Roughly 150 years after the events of Dungeon Siege 1, the 10th Legion, who provides stability and protection for the Kingdom for over 400 years, has almost been completely wiped out. 30 years before this game's setting, Jane Cassinder rallied the people of the Eastern Ebb against the Legion, who she blamed for the death of the King, who actually was her father. Following a long and brutal campaign, she manages to kill the entire remnant of the Legion in a battle in the Rukenval Forest. Jane Cassinder pretty much declares absolute victory after this battle, but little does she know there's still Legionnaires out there willing to do whatever it takes to keep the last of their line alive and hidden from her view. This is basically the beginning story for all the characters. But because you get to choose from four different characters at the start of Dungeon Siege 3, each one has a different storyline. So that adds some replayability to the game, but I really don't think anybody's going to play through this game four times to see every point of view. Because I've only beaten the game once, I'm going to be reviewing this game from the point of view of Lucas Montbaron, the son of the Grand Master of the 10th Legion. Lucas basically is the main character and main protagonist of the game, and his story is by far the closest to the 10th Legion and what we would call canon. But like any good action RPG character, Lucas really can't get anything done without skills. You know, nunchuck skills, bow staff skills, sword and shield skills, and of course two-handed sword skill. Dungeon C3 really strips down the character progression and the character customization and just gives you a model to build on. You really can't deviate anywhere from the model. And there's only a couple of different choices you could really make that changes up how your game plays. Now, I like this and I don't like this, but I think this is great for people just breaking into action RPGs that are afraid, oh, I'm going to make a mistake and my character's going to suck. Because the first two games were really unforgiving with character building, and if you built your character wrong, you couldn't even beat the freaking game. Dungeon Siege 3 is very much a game that's crippled by its peripheral. And what I mean by that is the console controller. This game is built for console and as such has to be limited by its peripheral. Uh, they can't give us 20-25 skills because you couldn't possibly fit that many buttons on the controller. After all, this game is really meant to be played with a keyboard. Now, the game gives you a few options on how to upgrade your skills. There's actually like a little scroll and you got like a blue one and a red one and you can go on the red one or you can go on the blue one. It's not really very advanced and it's very hard to explain because it's just a very simplistic screen. Now some increase damage, some increase, you know, how much you heal and so forth. Also there's other attribute points for ranks which gives you a passive bonus to crits, to healing, to... It's just pretty standard action RPG stuff. I mean it's nothing new here. They're not reinventing the wheel. Alright, for the last thing we want to talk about in the abilities was the game actually lets you take whatever character you didn't pick as your character. You do get to recruit them as an ally later on in the game. And it gives you full access to not only their equipment list, but also their skills and abilities. And you can pretty much customize and see everybody's skills and abilities, no matter who you pick as your main character. Dungeon 3 borrows a few concepts from other games, including a dialogue wheel. Now, they don't do a lot with the dialogue wheel, but there is a hidden karma system that does affect a lot of the stuff in the game, depending on your choices. And it also can gain influence with your allies. Now, I didn't get enough influence with any of my allies to really see a difference in anything they did, so I really can't go into detail about what the influence system even does, because it really wasn't even covered in the game, I don't think. But seriously, who needs a dialogue wheel when you can just stab someone in the friggin' face? It's time to get the most important aspect of Dungeon Siege 3, the thing you'll be doing most outside of backtracking and running around following cookie dust, is the combat. Now the combat of Dungeon Siege 3 can be summed up in two categories. Sometimes it runs smooth as silk, and other times it runs like shit. <laughs> but both types have one thing in common, and that is the dodging. This game is about 80% dodging, because if you're not dodging, you're dying. It's pretty much that simple. I mean, most of the actual combat in the game pretty much boils down to dodge, 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 pull off your three attack string, 
maybe mix in a special attack somewhere in there. But I think it might be a little different for some of the ranged characters, but I couldn't stand the fact that I took the risk to be the melee character, I take all the risk to get in close to deal my damage, and I am as soft as a cupcake! This game has no concept of armor class. I am wearing heavy plate mail armor, while everyone else is wearing cloth armor and leather armor, but everyone has the same armor rating and the same hit points. It makes no sense. I figured Lucas should be a tank. He's gonna have way higher hit points. He's gonna have way higher armor. He's gonna be way harder to kill. But in truth, I'm just as easy to kill as Lucas as I would be as any of the other characters. So that kind of ticked me off that there was no armor rating. It really kind of took a lot away from the fact that I was the melee character, that I was the tank, that I was supposed to take all the damage and be able to survive. I guess I'm a sucker for roles in RPGs, and that's why it ticked me off so much. But really, they need to look into that and hopefully patch that. Honestly, in the comment, I would have loved to see more flash, more pop from your skills, because the skills in the game are so boring to look at. Like, there's no super cool-looking thing you could do in this game. If you use any of your abilities, it was either a little blue aura, a little white aura, a little green aura, or you, you like, made the air move with you or something. It was... It never looked awesome, and I think the other characters had better-looking skills, but Lucas had really, really boring-looking skills. Now, even though they were boring, they did have impact. Lucas's skills just felt powerful when they bared down on the enemy. I'm talking about popping into an enemy and sending this dude flying 300 yards in the opposite way. I mean, yeah, it wasn't realistic, but it was funny as hell and added a lot of extra comedy to the game that was probably not even supposed to be in it. Now, Dungeon Siege 3 isn't short on enemy types. There's plenty of enemy types to beat the hell out of, and... Even some of them have even flashier moves than Lucas does, which was really disappointing to me. I have to say, I was a little bit jealous that people had Jesus magic and shit like that, and I had nothing as cool as that. The problem with most of the boss fights in this game, though, is it pretty much boils down to you playing, if you're playing as Lucas anyway, dodging from the boss, making it chase you around while your partner snipes their life bar down. And I had to do that in quite a few boss fights simply because... I would get killed so quickly because I was in melee range. Even when you're blocking and dodging, some characters have unblockable attacks, and it could really, really put a damper on your day. I'm truly starting to believe that this game was actually harder than it was supposed to be just because of the loot. Uh, games like this, action RPGs, do have a tendency to difficulty spike if you don't get good items. And for a long time, I wasn't getting any good items, so the game was harder than it had to be. And even when I was getting items, this game's loot is so friggin' boring, man. They were so stingy with the loot, it was unbelievable. I literally used the same orange sword that dropped at level 5 until level 25. When I finally got to the actual end of the game, I was able to get to a, a vendor who sold the best gear in the game. I mean, how lame is that to have to use the same sword for 20 levels? I hope if they make a sequel or they make an expansion pack, they give the loot some more identity. I'm tired of blue items being the same as green items with just a small stat boost, and there's not enough orange items in the game or original skins in the game. I mean, really, your character appearance never really changes, it just changes colors until the end of the game where you get your end game gear, and that doesn't change your appearance, but by then, the game is over, so you can't even enjoy your appearance for very long. I literally got to enjoy the endgame appearance for 15 minutes, if that. Now, Dungeon Siege 3 has some good graphics, man. I was really surprised at how they did the lighting in this game. It really made the screen come alive, and a lot of the areas look really, really good. And they're not really reused that much either. Uh, most of the areas are custom maps. They look completely different than the last area you were in. There's plenty of palette swaps. The graphics were good. There were some glitches in the dialogue areas and things like that where the characters wouldn't line up correctly, where their mouths wouldn't move. But that's just trivial stuff. I mean, a lot of people are going to bitch about that, but that's trivial to me. But the graphics package was well put together. I have to admit, I really enjoyed the towns, especially the one that was technologically advanced with all the mechs. I enjoyed questing in that town. It was pretty fun. So, let's move on to a few more things, and we're going to get to the verdict coming up here. All right, let's talk about the ending. Uh, the ending wasn't too bad at all, actually. I actually enjoyed the ending. Uh, they went the Fallout route with a bunch of still images and voiceovers, but I actually was glad about a lot of the choices I made in this game. 
Uh, the game ending for me was great because everything I wanted to happen, happened. So I guess I can't complain about that. Is it a little bit of a cop-out not to have an animated ending? Yes. I don't ever like to see endings still imaged. Uh, but you know what? It is an effective tool in Fallout because there's so many paths that can happen. And this game did the same thing, so I respect that. It's time for the verdict, and that brings us to the end of the first review we've done since the hack. I give Dungeon Siege 3 for the PlayStation 3, three and a half robot heads out of five. That makes it plenty playable, and I'm gonna call it somewhere between lukewarm. Yeah, lukewarm sounds perfect for this game. Not bad, but not great either. Okay guys, so that pretty much wraps up the review. Remember to comment, rate, subscribe, and also hit that like button, bro.